Kia ora, in the news today, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has welcomed Barack Obama to Israel on the first day of the US leader's four-day visit to the Middle East. The main focus of this visit appears to be Iran's nuclear program and recent reports of chemical weapons fueling terrorism in Syria's violent civil war. While Obama prefers diplomacy over military action, he acknowledged Israel's right to act on her own discernment in defending herself. On the matter of stalled Israeli-Palestinian peace talks, Mr Netanyahu has alluded to a historic compromise to end the conflict once and for all, while Obama declared that America's alliance with Israel is eternal and forever. Lawmakers in Cyprus are scrambling to find billions of dollars to prop up the country's banking system after failing to meet the conditions for a $13 billion IMF deal. Not a single member of parliament voted in favour of the controversial deal that would have seen Cypriot's personal accounts hit with a tax of up to 10%. Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard has been re-elected leader of the ALP. The caucus ballot was cast around two hours ago, with Ms Gillard the only person nominated for the role, while Wayne Swan remains her deputy. There was tension on this side of the Tasman as well today, with the topic of recent military deaths sparked angry exchanges between Labour and National MPs. Labour's Phil Goff alleged that training shortfalls had contributed to last year's drowning of Private Michael Ross and played a part in the deaths of soldiers in Afghanistan. Defence Minister Jonathan Coleman denied the accusation. I think it's pretty low that an absolute tragedy would be utilised by that member to try... Point of order. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Police investigating the fatal shooting of a road worker have received plenty of community assistance and are asking for more. George Tairoa was shot in the Kinleth area and the police appeal for information has seen consistent feedback, particularly sightings of a blue Jeep Cherokee or similar vehicle. The Serious Fraud Office has acted to address fraud and corruption in the Christchurch rebuild. Acting Chief Executive Simon McCarley confirmed they are working closely with police and Sarah to educate various stakeholders, insurers and construction companies. The SFO is also collaborating with the Office of the Auditor General and the Christchurch Fraud Prevention Working Group. Meanwhile, the beginnings of another major anchor project in Christchurch's CBB will get underway this weekend. Roger Sutton of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority updated business and community leaders at this morning's seismics and the city's seminar. My minister will be in the digger on Saturday kicking off this Avon River Park. We do see we want to frame up the CBD with this fantastic river park. There will be no official parliamentary inquiry into solid energy. The opposition suggested the move after discovering the state-owned energy company went from being a financial success to sinking in a debt hole of over $389 million. But today a majority of national MPs on the Commerce Committee has voted against an inquiry. To sport, Equestrian New Zealand has swung into action after news of an equine herpes outbreak. The Beaufort Hunt stables uncovered the disease in one horse just six weeks out from the badminton horse trials. And Kiwis are strongly favoured for Sunday's Ironman Melbourne 2013. The final preparations are underway and there are over 2,000 athletes competing for a prize purse of $125,000 US dollars. Multiple Ironman New Zealand champion Cameron Brown is the second favourite with Christchurch's Gina Crawford third favourite in the women's category. As New Zealand celebrates Race Relations Day today, it's been pointed out that our new relations, Race Relations Commissioner finds burkas disconcerting and wants Waitangi Day replaced with another national holiday. The newly installed Dame Susan Devoy may have to tone down her views. Her political boss, Judith Collins, defended Dame Susan but also said she'd now expect a little more discretion from the new commissioner. I'm sure she will consider that when you're in the role of Race Relations Commissioner that you're not always free to express your own personal views. Well, one sign of our cultural diversity is the 160 different languages spoken in the country. A recent paper released by the Royal Society described massive increases in ethnic and linguistic diversity in the last few decades, with Auckland one of the most culturally diverse cities in the world. So perhaps it's fitting as well as being Race Relations Day that today marks the launch of the reformatted Māori Bible. The current edition of Te Pai Para Tapu was first published in 1952, and our newsroom's Mania Clark explained that this new version reproduces that text, but updates it for the modern reader. 
So there's several enhancements to the revised Paipeta Tapu. They include macrons have been added to indicate longer vowel sounds. Paragraphing has been introduced under section headings as well as punctuation being carefully revised with speech marks added. That's the news for Thursday the 21st of March from the RBG Newsroom, Māori Ora.